Hello, and welcome to another Video Mana podcast. I'm Pastor Jeff Glenn, and it's my pleasure to take you through the Word each week. We are in Genesis, and we just came out of chapter 25, and we had this interesting last verse um, that, that read in the last line. It says, thus Esau despised his birthright. And, and these couple of chapters here are interesting because they end with these big with these big statements with a lot of uh, implication in just a short amount. And, and we'll kind of see the repercussions of Esau's despising of his birthright in chapter 26. So as we get started in chapter 26, there's four or five things that uh, we see in, in chapter 26. So make sure you take a, a second to read through that. It won't take you very long. Now you can follow along. Chapter 26 opens up with a famine in, in the land. And so this, this region of the world um, was prone to famines because we remember in Abraham's day, there was a famine also that drove Abraham down into Egypt. And now Isaac um, is being told by the Lord not to go down into Egypt, but to dwell in the land that he's he would be giving him. And so um, we, we see also a recommitment of the promises to Abraham as God is talking to Isaac, to this, this promise to make the, his descendants multiply beyond the stars and to give the descendants the land that, that, the, that God is going to show Isaac. And we see this is all based on Abraham's obedience. And we see that in verse 5, because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charges, my commands, my statutes, and my law and my laws. So, God is reminding Abraham or reminding Isaac of Abraham's faithfulness to all of that, and then at the same time, recommitting to Isaac these promises of, of land and descendants to to Isaac. And as we see Isaac settling in this land that's called. Gerar, which is a Philistine area of Israel at that time, that Isaac repeats his father's lie. And we, re- we remember that when Isaac lied twice to two different people, um, that Sarah was his sister. Well, Isaac makes the same lie. And we see that in verse 7. And the men of the place, Gerar, asked about his wife. And he said, she is my sister. For he was afraid to say, she is my wife, because he thought, lest the men of the place kill me for Rebekah, because she is beautiful to behold. So we see this lie, and it's with the exact same results, right? He gets found out. This lie doesn't doesn't last. It says that they were in the land for a long time, but we don't know what that means. But we see that um, Abimelech, he's looking out his window, and he actually witnesses Isaac and Rebekah engaged in PDA, this public display of affection. And um, the, the word used here in verse 8, it says, there was Isaac showing endearment to his, to his wife. So these, these couple of words, um, they, they, they're kind of um, been translated other places to, to, to play or to to laugh or, or to mock. But the idea here is that they were seen in some kind of flirtatious manner that really left no doubt in Abimelech's mind that uh, Rebecca's not his sister. They're not going to be flirting like this and maybe even um, other, other translations uh, say caressing um, like that if he's just his sister. And so um, similarly, though, with Abraham and Sarah, right, Rebecca was a sister to Isaac in that he was um, that she was the, the, of the same broader family back in, in, Cal, in the Chaldees um, because we know that uh, Abraham's servant went to retrieve her from there. So um, this technicality, though, is still a lie that, um, that got him called out um, by Abimelech. So uh, Abimelech is this, is this heathen king. Um, he, you know, he's leading this people who's at enmity with God due to their idolatry and uh, rejection of God as, as their true God. And so um, this is why Abraham sent, a, sent for um, a bride. He did not want Isaac to corrupt himself and the family with, with a bride of the, of the Canaanites. So 
Um, we, we see this, this king, Abimelech, is actually the same name as one of the kings that, that Abraham lied to, but it's probably like 75 years in between, so it's not likely it's the same guy. It's probably that they just took a similar title um, in, in this land. And so we actually also see two other Israelites uh, later on in the Bible who are named Abimelech. So just because it's the same name doesn't mean it's the same guy. But, but it is the same situation where we have Isaac lying about his wife um, to a heathen king that calls him out on it. And, you know, whether or not Isaac, you know, maybe he remembered these two events from his father previously and, you know, took from that the providence and protection of God. Um, we, we don't know, but but for him, that's exactly what he gets. He gets providence from and protection from the Lord. One, that you know, the Abimelech doesn't kill him and, and take uh, Rebekah, but Abimelech sends him on his way. And um, as as in with Abraham, he do, we don't see that he's given any wealth. Abraham was given wealth and, and livestock and all the rest. But Abimelech does let Isaac um, stay in the land and go to his own area and kind of homestead there. And so we see that um, in verse 12 through 14. Then Isaac sowed that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And the man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. And he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants. So the Philistines envied him. So over this course of the next period of time, we see Isaac growing in in posterity here, in possession, in this land that uh, the a king of Abimelech had, had let him go off to. In this, we also see this this uh, series of redigging of wells. So after Abraham had come through the similar area, and that king of Abimelech had sent him on his way, the Philistines went through and and buried up all the wells that Abraham had dug. But now Isaac is in the land, and he's going back through and redigging this wells. And that brings about um, some contention and strife with the herdsmen of that area. And we see in verse 20 and 22, But the herdsmen of Gerar quarreled with Isaac's herdsmen, saying, The water is ours. So here they have just done a redigging of a well, and these um, herdsmen of Gerar come up and say, Hey, that's our, our well. Um, so Isaac moves on, um, and it says, verse 21, Then they dug another well, and they quarreled over it. And so... Um, he called his name Sitna, which, which means enmity and quarreling. And they moved on from there, and they dug another well, and they did not quarrel over it. So, so um, Isaac is, is moving his clan from place to place until they finally find a spot that they're not in contention with uh, the, the herdsmen of Gerar, these, these Canaanite herdsmen. And so, again, all of, his, all of his drama and strife is going on. And so, but we see this, this providence from the Lord that they finally found a place where they could, where they could settle and um, there was no contention from this herdsman of Gerar. And so um, this helped Isaac's clan to thrive. And we see that they, they indeed did th thrive, which reaffirmed the covenant and the promise to multiply Abram's and now Isaac's offspring, which we see in verse 24 and 25. Now the Lord appeared to him in the same night and said, I am the God of your father Abraham. Do not fear, for I am with you, and I will bless you and multiply your descendants for my servant Abraham's sake. So he built an altar there, and he called on the name of the Lord, and he pitched his tent there, and there Isaac's servants dug a well. And so, again, this providence and protection from the Lord, and which is bringing, like I said, Isaac and his clan, which would become Israel, um, some notoriety among the Philistines, which brings them some, they're nervous now that they're growing so large. And so from this, from this, um, an oath would be made. So now Abimelech approaches Isaac and wants to seek a covenant between them so that Isaac and his clan wouldn't attack Abimelech and his. And so they make this, this covenant um, that... Um, there would be protection, a, a mutual kind of, not protection, but the, like a, a, a no killing each other contract. So this oath that's uh, made um, was binding, and we'll see that as, as the, um, the story continues, at least for, for some time, the, they didn't uh, go after each other. And then we end in verse 34, which again, this chapters end in, in these really 
succinct ways with short passages that kind of mean a lot. Verse 34, when Esau was 40 years old, he took his wives, Judith, the daughter of Berea, the Hittite, and uh, Bazamoth, the daughter of Alon, the Hittite. And <clears throat> this, this doesn't seem uh, too bad until we realize, wait a minute, these are Hittite women, these are Canaanite women. Uh, we know that Abraham insisted on Jacob's wife not being a Canaanite, and now we have Esau. He ends up taking two Canaanite women to be his wives. And then verse 35 ends the chapter, and it says, And they were a grief of mind to Isaac and Rebekah. Well, I'll bet, you know, the, here we have Esau, who's um, no doubt deliberately taking two Canaanite women um, to, um, into the family, bringing these idol worship um, at enmity women into the family. And so this grief of mind, like a more literal, literal translation, might say something like uh, they were a bitterness of spirit to Isaac and, and Rebecca, and so just just kind of this angst, this inner thing that just doesn't doesn't sit right. And so, um, chapter twenty six doesn't end much better than chapter twenty five from an encouragement standpoint. Like we can't, you know, we're left here with the grief of mind, with this with this burdensome thoughts um, for Isaac and Rebecca. But we do see God's continued protection and providence for his chosen people. And so that is of great encouragement. And so until next week, stay encouraged and stay in the word.